Start off by base coating Mary's hands, face and feet with Bugman's Glow. Apply a layer with 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian's Flesh Tone to bring the hue of the skin up and bring some life to the flesh. Once the wash is dry, reapply the previous Bugman's Glow Cadian Flesh Tone layer, this time leaving the right tone flesh shade showing in the recesses around the eyes, mouth and nose as well as between the fingers and toes. Highlight all the skin with pure Cadian Flesh Tone. Start to focus on the upper and more pronounced areas of skin to create natural definition. Make sure here as well to separate out each finger and toe. These highlights can be fairly minimal on the feet as they're in shadow cast from his body and his cloak. Apply another highlight with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh. This time push the definition of the upper areas more by keeping your highlights as tight as possible to give the underneath layers a chance to show through. Finally, apply a fine edge highlight by adding more Pallid Witch Flesh to the mix. Now you want to focus on the uppermost areas of skin like the nose, eyebrows, chin, knuckle joints, ankles and tips of the toes. You can also fill in Mary's eyes here with Abaddon Black and Pallid Witch Flesh. Although this step is not crucial, it does bring a lot of life to the finished model. Face coat Mary's hair with still lesion drap. Don't forget the tufts of hair atop his feet. Layer over the hair by adding a small amount of the messy desert to the mix. This will just lift the undercoat enough to give the fair, sandy look to Mary's hair from the films. Once the wash is dry, reapply the previous mix leaving the Agrax Earth shade showing in the recesses. Now you want to focus on creating definition and flow through the hair by painstakingly picking out individual hairs across Mary's tussled, ruffled head. You don't have to be perfectly neat here, but the more precise you are at this stage, the tighter the highlights will look when we're finished.
For the next highlight, add Pallid Witch Flesh into the Steel Legions and Messy Desert mix, and again, as before, concentrate on accentuating the individual hairs across Mary's head and feet. Finally, add more pallid witch flesh to the mix and apply the final edge highlight to the most pronounced areas of hair, as well as the tips and the biggest curls. We want to create a distinctly different hue for Mary's waistcoat so it doesn't end up blending in with the hair from it being too much of a similar shade. To achieve this, start off by base coating the waistcoat with Zandri Dust. Once the wash is dry, start blocking out the upper folds of material with a mix of Zandri Dust and Zemesi Desert, leaving the Agrax Earth shade showing in the deepest recesses. For the first highlight, add Screaming Skull to the mix and apply to the upper folds and edges of material to create a natural flow. Screaming Skull tones the highlights differently to the pallid witch flesh we use for the hair, so again, we're further differentiating between the hair and the waistcoat. Add even more Screaming Skulls in the mix for the final edge highlight on the upper and outermost fold of the waistcoat. Once finished, carefully pick out each button down his chest with Abaddon Black and paint over again with Sycorax Bronze. Make sure you have a good point on your brush here as any mistakes will spill out over onto the nice finished waistcoat. Hobbits are personified by their bright and colourful attire. With the four main hobbits of the Fellowship it gives us a great chance to explore a variation of colour palettes you wouldn't commonly see across other armies. Merry's jacket is a rich deep green, but we want to create some differentiation between his, his jacket and Frodo's cloak to keep each hobbit's feeling unique. To start Merry's jacket, base coat with a mix of Caliban green and dryer bark. Once the wash is dry, add some Semesi Desert to the mix to naturally brighten the overall tone of the green. This will also prevent the jacket highlights later from becoming too bright overall as it would if we added the lighter green here.
For the next few stages we went for a slightly unorthodox highlight colour. We added in some Gauze Blaster Green for each successive highlight. We made sure only to add a little bit at a time to prevent the overall look becoming too unnatural. The Gauze Blaster not only lightens the overall tone, but the slight pastel hue to it creates a more natural and weather-worn look, so we're still maintaining the textbook vibrancy of a Hobbit, but also giving their attire a more lived-in look. We opted for three successive highlights to the jacket, each time adding more Gauze Blaster Green to the mix and focusing more and more on the outer folds of material and the outer edges such as the lapels, pockets and jacket lining. Base coat the trousers with dried bark. Once the wash is dry, layer over with a mix of dryer bark and Gawthor Brown, being careful to leave the Agrax earth shade showing in the recesses between material folds. Finally, edge highlight the trousers with pure Gawthor Brown. Paint Mary Saw with Lead Belcher. Once the wash is dry, edge highlight with Rune Fang Steel. Base coat the cloak with a mix of Death Corpse Drab and Dryer Buck. This will create the base for a nice, earthy, rich cloak which will complement the overall tone of the jacket really effectively once finished. You may have to apply this in a few thin coats in order to get a smooth finish over the black undercoat.
Add some Zemissi Desert to the mix for the layering stage. This, as with the jacket, helps bring up the overall tone naturally and will also help tie the model together overall. Start adding in Elysian Green for the next few highlight stages. This will lift the green really nicely and with careful application to the upper and outer folds of material will create a nice authentic fur of material and effective depth and shadow without the need for a wash. We applied two successive highlights to the cloak, adding in more Elysian green each time. Finally, apply a fine edge highlight to the upper and outermost fold of the cloak with Og Green Camo, pushing the previous highlight stages further by keeping these highlights as tight as possible. Paint Mary's backpack and straps with dry up bark.
Finally, edge highlight the bag and straps with pure Gothor Brown.